Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Welcome to another Saturday talk promoted by the United States Spiritist Federation. We are very happy to be here once again. This is the 101 lecture. Last week we had the 100th lecture and you can find them all on, on the United States Spiritist Federation YouTube page. Facebook page or the uh, TVC, the International Spiritist Council uh, YouTube page. Uh, before we start, a reminder, every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, we have the course Initiation into Spiritism, uh, which is a course uh, focused on those trying to learn more about Spiritism that are starting to learn about spiritism. We already have a series of talks that you can find covering different aspects of spiritism. And we welcome you all to join us if, if for the first time or if you continue to, uh, to watch it, to be back with us. Uh, you can donate to help the United States Spiritist Federation we have a QR, Q, QR code that you can scan and donate. You help us uh, continue promoting these events, uh, these lectures, and these uh, talks. Okay, so now let us bring our friend Gustavo. Good morning, Gustavo. Well, good afternoon for you. You are in Brazil, so beginning of the afternoon in Brazil. We are very happy to have you here. Let me introduce you to Gustavo. He was born in Araxá, state of Minas Gerais in Brazil, but nowadays he lives in Uberlândia, also in the state of Minas Gerais, very close to where Francisco Xavier uh, had the last part of his life in Uberaba. He collaborates with studies in the channel spiritismo.net and in a podcast called Coffee and Spiritism, also translated into English, Café com Espiritismo. So we are very happy to have you here, Gustavo, and uh, please take it away. Thank you, John. Um, first of all, I would like to thank Jussara for, the, for this opportunity. I um, feel honored and happy to be here. And um, this is my first lecture in English, so <laughs> I'm really afraid of making more mistakes than I'm used to, to, to make in my daily routine here. But it's a, it's a pleasure. It's very good to be here. And it's very challenging, actually. And uh, someone might ask, why did I have accepted uh, this, this challenge? Why did I accept this? Um, since I'm not I mean, I'm not American, I'm from Brazil, trying to, to do my best in English here. And uh, when Jussara invited me, and here I also have to, to thank Alvaro, Alvaro Mordechai, which is a good friend, a very close friend that helped me to be here. And uh, when Jussara invited me, I thought, I thought in deny the, the, invite, the invitation, but in the same time, I thought that spiritism came to bring us all together. And because of that, we have to, to make as much as effort we can to, to get over these obstacles of these this problems. And... Uh, with these, we can grow together, you know. So I'm here not as a professor because I really haven't, I, I really don't have anything to, to teach. But as a friend, as a brother that wants to share a thing that is bringing me peace and make me feel more, make me trust more in life, you know. And uh, this is the effort I think we have to do to hold hands and walk together. And uh, 
well i also love challenges you know <laughs> so this would be good it's a good thing to to work on right um so i would like to thank john too and daniel that is helping us with this live and uh, well our thing today is about god we would like to talk about god and to talk about God according to Spiritism, we have to start from the beginning. Uh, here we would like to start from the first question of the first book, the Spirit's book, which is a very, very, very interesting question. And that put us in a really new, ex new perspective about God. Because when we look over the history, the way we understand God have changed a lot. And the way Spiritism presents us the God, I think is the, the most revolution in this, in this perspective, in this thought, because we always thought a God for the earth and a God for the humanity that we see, <laughs> that we can get in touch. But Spiritism put us in a cosmic way, in a cosmic perspective. And in this perspective, we can understand many things and many things start to make sense. So the first, the first question of the Spirit's book is, what is God? What is God? The question itself is a, it's a lesson. Because Kardec didn't start the book asking if God exists. He's not, he's not thinking about this because it's a certain thing. God exists. But now we want to understand what it is what it is if the first question is does god exist we would have a big problem big problem because kardec would be asking to the spirits and uh, it doesn't make sense thinking about spirits if god doesn't exist so what we see here is that alan kardec is pretty sure about the existence of God. Now we want to understand what it is because during the, the centuries, we kind of confused things. We created things that it's not true. So we have to start from the real beginning. We have to understand what God is. So we can build a new knowledge, a new things, some new things actually, and start to understand how it how he created how how he handle handles everything so what is god is the first question god exists we would like to understand more about it and the way the question is built is not um it's not a question that would like to define god because Definitions is always limiting because we, we define a thing, so we kind of uh, put limits so it cannot overlap this limit. We cannot get over this limit. It's a definition. So uh, a computer cannot be a car because a computer is limited to be a computer. But there is a premise here. We just can define what we know, what we really know. To define a thing, you have to know everything about it. And we for sure, we don't understand everything about God because we just understand what he reveals to us. If he, don't, if he doesn't reveal, we can't see, we can't understand, we can't imagine actually we not even can imagine because god is very 
very transcendent, let's say. So the question here is not to define, but to get a principle of understanding, to get a way to start. I mean, okay, we can understand everything about God, but can we have at least a sign, at least a piece? And here we understand, we understand why the question is what and not who. Who is God? No, what is God? Because who, who is about a person? So who is Gustavo? Oh, Gustavo is a guy that lives in Brazil and so on. It's a person. But here Kardec asked what? No presumptions, no previous understandings. Let's start from the real, real beginning. What is God? What is God? Because God is not, because God is not a person. God, is, God, God doesn't have a body. God is not a human, let's say. So what is? We just would like to understand a bit. What is God? Well, the answer is small, let's say. It's not the smaller one, but it's really small. But it's really, really deep. Because the spirits said, God is the supreme intelligence, the first cause of all things. So let's split this answer in two, in two pieces. God is the supreme intelligence. What does this mean, the supreme intelligence? It means that there is no, there is no intelligence greater. No one is better. No one is higher. There are good intelligence. There are divine intelligence. But God is the supreme one. There is none above. There is none greater. God is the supreme one. Supreme intelligence. This is cool. This is cool actually because in Genesis, let me just get here the reference to not commit any mistakes. In Genesis, we have a we have a a versicle saying that we were created as God. I mean, um, let me just get here. As the kind, as a similarity to the God. And because of that, Many people thought that God has a body. So we have that image uh, from Michelangelo, I think, that God is trying to touch his finger through the man finger. And uh, we kind of use it to think about God in an old man sitting in a throne and saying what is wrong and what is right and who goes to the heaven, who goes to the hell. Because it seems like that we look to us, we have looked to us, and we identified us by our bodies. So if we are like God, if we are kind of God, so God might have a body too. And we de define a body to him. We define a way to understand him. But God is not that. I mean, Jews don't, the, don't have this view, I mean. They understand that God is a spirit, not exactly a human or a superhuman. And uh, when the spirit says, says, say that God is the supreme intelligence, they are also explaining why, why Genesis said that.
why Genesis said that we were we were created as the image of God. Because God is the supreme intelligence and we, the spirits, we have intelligence. We have intelligence. So we, we are the intelligence creatures, like, like the, the creatures that can think, that can understand things, because we have intelligence, and God is the supreme intelligence. So we have as a tribute what he is in what he is actually right god is this is important too god doesn't have intelligence he is the, the supreme intelligence which puts us in a real new perspective what is good too because when we look to the nature we see the intelligence going on all the process, the chemical, the biological, the physical process, the loss, gravity, and so on. That makes us feel that there is really an intelligence behind this. This cannot be random, right? This cannot be a thing that just appears. There is an intelligence behind this. And the spirit is insane. This intelligence behind the nature, behind everything we see in the creation, in the infinite creation, everything that is behind, the thing that is behind this is God. God is the supreme intelligence soul. This is a really, really new perspective. Really new perspective. So there is no body, there is no human-like we we have a body during our evolution period our evolution time but we are not the body so god is not too <laughs> but the the real interesting thing here is when spirits say that God is the first cause of all things. Here is really interesting. Because in Genesis from Moses, we have a God that is the ultimate cause of all things. Because for everything that is created, God just say and the things appear in the last instance, let's say. So... God wants to create a tree, an apple tree, for example. And he said, appears the tree, and the tree appears with apples, <laughs> with everything already. It's, it's, uh, it's interesting because when the, the, the human would be created, God get from the dust of the earth, breathe, and the human appears magically, magically. So as time goes passing, our views, our perspectives, our understanding of the earth itself and the universe, the universe makes us understand things that could lead us to think that this book, for example, Genesis, is a complete lie. There is no nothing right there. <laughs> Look at here. Look at this. Um, how can God do this if we already know that everything is improving, is developing? How? How can we understand a God that creates everything from a simple word? If we are understanding that everything is just growing and improving and developing. 
Um, so when Spiritism say, say that God is the first cause of all things, Spiritism is saying that think about nature. Why does nature appear? And we have an explanation for it. Oh, it's because of this. And okay, but why this happen? The cause of nature, why does this happen? And we were kind of, oh, this is another thing before and before and before. And 10 years later, we are asking, what is the cause? And it, oh, this, there is a, a cause that came before and before and before. And when we arrive in a place that we can't explain anymore, we're still far from God, but we can say, we can say that God is there. God is the first cause. So God creates principles, let's say. God, God doesn't create the spirit itself as we are. No. We have an evolution time here. We have a, a process that has already gone. I mean, that has already been completed. But is it still ongoing? Is it still happening? But we already built some things. And we start from the real beginning. From the real beginning. Which is, which is very good because... In the Gospel according to Spiritism, Kardec will write a, a, an item in the first chapter that he will say that the faith and the science can, can be together inside Spiritism. We know that everything is developing, but how it appears, how it was created, and Spiritism will, will say, God created. God created. But when he created, he doesn't create things ready. Things will develop. Develop. So here we have a kind of a problem because... Also in Gospel According to Spiritism, also in the first capture, actually the, the title of the first cap capture is, uh, is I don't came to destroy the law. This is interesting because if Spiritism is, doesn't come, didn't come to destroy the law, we have to look at everything that came before and e explain why it's true or why, why it's false. But Kardec said that Moses is the first revelation. First. And since it's the first revelation, it seems like it's not false. We just have to interpret, just have to understand. Because when we face something like that, I mean, some, some things that doesn't make sense. I mean, how can God create the human from the dust of the, the earth? And now we understand that actually the human being is, the, is a development of another, of another, uh, another creature, let's say. How can, we, how can we put this all together? Because here we have three options, right? We can deny the Spiritism, we can deny Moses, the Old Testament, let's say, or, or there is a third option, we can find a way to put all them together, to put the both together. Is there a way to do that? Well, there, there is a way. <laughs> it's just not our focus today to prove that, but there is a way. Because the problem here is when we read the Bible, literally when we try to to find on it on its letter a true this is not actually possible because because 
there we will find symbols that have to be interpreted. Because, for example, the sun, the sun is created in the fourth, the fourth day. The sun is created in the fourth day. But when the sun appears, we already have three days. We have an evening and we have a morning. How? How can it be? So for sure, it's not, it's not supposed to be read literally. We have to interpret. We have to, to go deep because, because in Spiritism, we also have an understanding about attributes of God. Attributes of God. That's why here we would like to, to go through the 13, the question 13 of the Spirit's book. Kardec asked it. When we stated that God is eternal, infinity, immutable, immaterial, one, all-powerful, and supremely just and good, don't we have a complete idea of God's attribute? Attributes, sorry. So it's seven. There are seven attributes here. And the spirits will say that from our point of view, okay, this is all, everything we can see about God. But for sure, it doesn't complete everything because there are things from God that we can't not even imagine. They will say that in the answer. But what I would like to point here is that God is one and it's immutable. Since it's one and immutable, Moses, Moses, Christ, and Spiritism are talking about the same God. And this God is immutable. So it's not possible that God said something in the past that is not true anymore. Because this would make us think that God changed. And Emmanuel would say one would say once that only humans build to destroy later and rebuild. So we start a project and see that something might be improved and then we redo and redo, 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 rebuild. This doesn't happen to God because God is the supreme intelligence. Is the supreme intelligence. So God builds once, only once. So, when we understand that Moses brings, brought to us the first revelation, there are some divine things in Moses, in Moses' law. There are divine things that we have to, to get, we have to understand, we have to study. Kardec would say that the, the Ten Commandments are still true. Are still true. So, we're not allowed to just throw them away. Oh, the Old Testament doesn't have a value. No, it has. Actually, it has. So, here, we would like to to focus in another attribute from God, in another attribute, because we understand that He is immutable, He is one, He is all-powerful, and so on. But the seventh, the seventh attribute is supremely just and good. It's just one attribute. It's not two, because it can be supremely just without being supremely good. And vice versa. It can't be supremely good without being the supreme, supremely just. Because if we try to deny any of these justice of goodness, we'll fall in a violence or in a negligence. Because this good, we all, we always try to, to find 
actually is is more like negligence because this good can't say no this good can't teach and the ju the justice without the goodness is more like violence um, it makes a bigger crime to fix an, a smaller one so god must be supremely just and good and this this is a consequence of being the supreme intelligence a thing that is missing in the first answer of the first question of the spirit book is where is love because john writing it's his letter he said that god is love god is love and where we can find can we find where can we find love in the first answer in the first answer when we think about intelligence we think about a, a very a very how can we say intellectual person oh he's so intelligent so he's methodic he's he's distant from people he, he he doesn't believe in god and so on but the, what the spirit is saying also in the first answer of the first question is that it's not a sign of intelligence when we don't love when we don't like we don't care about people this is not a sign of intelligence because the real, real, real intelligence also has to love. Because love is the best way to do things. We still believe in the violence. We still believe in the force. But love is the better way to do things. I mean, when we, we try to buy something, let's say, and we buy a product that has a problem, so we can go through the, the store and try to act as a violent person trying to 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 get a new product to to get the replace and sometimes we we achieve sometimes we don't achieve what we want but if we come to the store with love with patience with respect even in the cases that the that thing can do anything, he will try. He will try to help us. We have to believe on that. We have to believe on that. Because the real sign of intelligence is when we love. Is when we try to be together, when we try to solve things in peace. Is when we respect, even though it doesn't mean we will agree so god is the supreme intelligence and this also implies that he is the supreme love and being the supreme intelligence and the supreme love implies that he has to be supremely just and good justice and goodness Well, when we say that, when we say that, we start to understand that God is not only the creator, but is the father that Jesus brings to us, that Jesus reveals, revealed. God is the father, the real father, the father that takes care, the father that lead orient the father that teaches fix behaviors for example this is extremely important because when we understand everything from this is the supreme intelligence is the supreme love is the is supremely good and just 
we start to understand why in the Old Testament, for example, there are, there, there are many, many stories that God appears to people and God helped people. Why? Because God really takes care of all the creation. So, when we understand this, for sure, we, we would like to see how this works. Because a, 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 really, a really hard thing to understand is how God can take care, take care of everything. That's why we would like to, to go through the divine providence that Kardec presents us in Genesis, the last book of him. When Kardec wrote about divine providence, he explained us many things, many things. For example, we understand that nature has laws, that the universe has laws. And because God is supremely just and good, we understand that these laws are also supremely just and good. But there is a thing that came to my mind. Let's say, when, when we have a law here in, in physical world, let's say, when we have a law, the existence of the law doesn't imply that it will be fulfilled. Right? For example, kill a person is prohibited. It's not legal. But if I kill someone and no one sees, if there is no way to prove that I was the, the, the one that killed, anything will, nothing will happen to me. I'll be free. Unless I'll, I'll go there and say... But the law exists, it's, it's not legal, but it doesn't care, it doesn't matter actually, it doesn't matter, because no one see what I did, there is no way to prove that I did it. So, it's not enough to the law to exist, we have to have someone or some institution to guarantee that the law would be applied. In terms of the universe, we have laws, but who, who guarantees that this law would be fulfilled? God, the only possible answer, God. That's why it's the supreme intelligence, because God can't be confused or fooled. God can't be wrong let's say he is taking care of everything of everyone and this is explained by kardec when he wrote about divine providence i get a, a small a small piece here just for us to understand what is kardec saying what kardec is saying he said providence is God's care for all creatures. God is everywhere, sees everything, and presides over everything, even the very smallest things. This is what providential action consists of. Kardec will explain how this works in Genesis. We won't have time to, to go through it. But... A big mistake we can't we can't make here in Spiritism is think about a God that is distant from the creation. We have to think about a God that is near, that is close to us, that is taking care, because He can. He really can. Uh, actually, He is the only one that really can. For sure, there are spirits acting by His command. But it, it came from him because he is the first cause of everything. 
right? He is the first cause. So when we say God according to Spiritism, we are saying about everything that is in the 13th question, but we are also saying about a God that's really present in our lives, that's really present in our actions, in our thoughts, in our feelings. Because God is not a father that creates and let us alone. God is with us. This is not mystical. This is not a fantasy. No, this is real. The thing is that the Spirit didn't help us helps us to understand how this works. So that God from the Old Testament that is always present, that is always giving its opinion to his child, to his son, this God is the same God we are talking about here. This is the same God we are talking about here. So, Spiritism doesn't break any truth about God that we can find in Old or New Testament. No. Spiritism is just explaining us how this works and how can we really understand this. I mean, the truth, because there are some fantasies we created, right? Over the years, over the centuries. But in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, we have really true things about God. From Jesus, we only have truth. <laughs> we have to understand what Jesus saying, is saying. If we, when I say we, is because it's actually we, <laughs> I mean, in past lives, right? But when we introduce some mistakes as the Spirit, the, the Spirit says in the Gospel according to Spirit, when we introduce mistakes in the Christianism, we kind of uh, messed everything. But there are truth there. There are really truths. And God, according to Spiritism, is it still the Creator? Is it still the Father? Is it still the one that is really, really close to us? But one thing that Spiritism always remembers, remember us is that God is supremely just and good. So He will help us fix our mistakes. He won't pretend that nothing was done, nothing was wrong. No, what is wrong will be fixed our mistakes will be fixed, our imperfections will be fixed, but everything will happen inside the love, inside the good, the goodness of God. So, Spirit gave us a way to, inter to interpret, to understand, to see that God was, is, and will be always with us, revealing himself. Because as we said in the beginning, if God doesn't reveal, we can not even imagine. And it's not false that he cares. He lead us. He lead us. We may trust him because he trusts us every time even though we fail a lot, even though we fail a lot. So this is the God, Spiritism presents us. It's the same God of all time. But now we have ways to understand better so we can trust, we can believe. And that's it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, John.
Thank you very much, Gustavo. Fascinating, really uh, very interesting presentation and, uh, and very important, right? Because when we start uh, studying spiritism, we have to start from the beginning. And this is really uh, the beginning uh, to understand or to try to understand, because I don't think we are able to understand, to try to understand God or at least have some basic notions of uh, how spiritism presents God to us is really it's fundamental on our uh, path. So uh, once again, thank you very much. Um, but I think we have some questions. So let's start with uh, one from Paula Craig. Thanks, Paula, for always joining us. How does the spirit world really sees us as just energy or a spirit body, or do they see us in our human body? Um, that's a good question. That's a good question. Um, actually, they see us in our human bodies, let's say, but not only that, they can see our thoughts, our energy, like the, the question is saying, because Andrea Luis, I don't know if, if it's called this way, Andrea Luis uh, says in, in his books that our thoughts, and Kardec will, will say about that in, in, in a book, our thoughts is like uh, there, there are colors, there are smell, they have smell, they have colors, and the spirits can see that, can see that. So they they can see our intentions, our feelings, our thoughts. Kardec will study about that in the spirits book too. But they, of course, they all always also see us, our bodies as they are. But this body is not a sorry. I'm sorry. This body, our bodies, is not a problem for them to recognize us. Let's say. Uh, a spirit that um, that could share with me a life many many centuries ago. When he sees me, he can recognize recog recognize me. So it's a it's a bunch of things that they see when they look at us, right? Thank you. Yeah, it's um, it, it's an interesting question, right? How how do they really? Uh, how do they recognize us from this the spirit world because uh considering that we have many incarnations right how they can reach us and uh it is the thought process i think is very important there all right next uh, when we pray to god how does it really work good um kardec will explain that in gospel according to spiritism in the I think in the cap chapter 27, I think. Um, he, he said that uh, our praise go through the space as a sound go through the air. It's like, it's like traveling in the air. So we, we have the concept of cosmic fluid that is feeling all the creation and our thoughts is like uh, emitting I think um, through this fluid and I spirit can see this and try to attend but everything occurs below the permission of God I mean uh, nothing can occur if God doesn't allow let's say so when we pray to God, for sure he hears, he listens to our praise and he uses the spirits to, to make things happen. And these could travel all the creation going through the fluid, cos the cosmic fluid, <laughs> the cosmic fluid, because our thoughts, our thoughts are, is, are things that can be seen, can be, uh, can be i think it's seeing the word i mean it's like can be touched all actually and they are matter yes yes 
and uh, I mean this is uh, uh, let's say this is a, a, a small view of how it works but uh, it would be good to read that chapter I, I don't know if the word is chapter chapter, I, chapter, chapter. yes chapter. 27 27 from gospel according to spirit it will okay. help us understand this thank you thanks gustavo uh, so from daniel santos thanks daniel many religions believe that jesus christ is god and they are one and the same what is the spiritist view on the subject good good question um we don't believe this that jesus is god um, because spiritism has a thing that we already we already face it in another doctrines, but spiritism present us in a different perspective is about evolution. So we are spirits in an evolution uh, way, let's say. And Jesus is a spirit that fulfilled all his evolution process, let's say. Jesus is a spirit that achieves the highest, the highest level of evolution. And that's why for us, he looks like God because we are, we are God's sons and there is no, there is there are, there isn't, other one involved here we are son of god only so the thing is that we would like look like god as we look like our parents but we would like we would like look like sorry we will like we will look like a uh, god because we are his sons and jesus is a spirit that achieved the highest level that's the way spiritism pre presents us but they are different. They are. We respect every view, every perspective. But for our spiritism, they are different. It's just a matter of evolution, and uh, it's like Jesus is like that old brother that takes care of us, and we look to him and we see the Father. But it's a son. It's a son that that presents us the God in a the most poor way, the most uh loyal way let's say and that's it i mean thanks i like the concept of an older brother yes okay so another question for paula does spiritism believes that god knows us each very personally like the christian believe god knows every hair in your on your head yes yes we do in this in this item i bring here from genesis Kardec will explain that in a very, very fancy way. It's it's elegant the way Kardec presents us this. But yes, God knows us because being the supreme intelligence, God can do things handle, let's say. So if he creates me, he created me, it's because he has a purpose to do that. And if he has a purpose with me, for sure he knows me. It's not a matter of, oh, just create a, a, a spirit here. No, it's not that. It's intentionally. It's with purpose. So yes, spiritism believes that God knows us each very personally, very close. That's why we have this providence that helps us our in our lives, in our in our uh, in our daily works and so on. Thank you. So from Yasko Arakawa, thanks Yasko, nice to have you here. How to enhance our perception of God and its relationship with us on our daily lives and activities? Um, I would say that we have to want it. <laughs> we have to want it because God is really present. So if we want, we would say, we will start to see how many things happen that is not below our control we don't control many things and they and then they happen i mean and this is a this is a 
a way to see the presence of God. So when we start to pay more attention to things that happen to us, for sure, for sure, we can think about coincidences. We can think about, um, oh, it's a matter of fact. No, we can think about this, but we also can think about God, about God acting. And many, many things we'll, we will see that cannot be just a hand on thing. And this will improve our perception of God because we will try, we will start to, to feel more present, more the present, really. Um, I mean, start to see things that it's not under your control and they still happen correctly. And we will see God there. We will see God in our conscience, in our thoughts giving us the right direction, give us the right way to, to, to go. It's just, we just have to want. I mean, the Spirit will say that in the Spirit's book. If we want, God will present to us, will be present to us. I like that. We want, we need to want. That's the key. Thanks. So from the United States Spiritist Federation. So many religions have started with someone saying they heard something directly from God. What or whom they were really hearing from? Um, that's good. Um, Kardec will say in I I don't know I don't know the word the, the name in English heaven and hell, the book. Uh, heaven and hell, yes. Heaven and hell. Uh, he will say that there that uh, God acts through the creatures, I mean, through the spirits. It's all, always God, if we think of the first cause. It's always God. I mean, if a spirit says something to me that is good or it's giving me the right direction, this, is, this came from God. But God uses the spirits because... This is also, a, let's say, a way to spirits to work and to be useful. So for sure, I can say that God is not able to talk directly, but he prefers to use the spirits. That's the point. If he can or if he cannot, I'm not the one that will say that, but he prefers to use the spirits. So I heard... I heard the God. Well, this source of the, the thought, it, it's God. But who actually said that to me? Probably and most probably is the spirit. Is a is spirit acting in the name of God, which is kind of the same, but it's a spirit. Thanks. Okay, I think we have time for one last question. Um, Throughout centuries, many of us believed that God was an old man in a throne. To move from that to a very abstract concept of God is a huge step. Is there any intermediary steps that can help us transition? That's a good point. Actually, it's, a, it's such a huge step that we couldn't do it till today. <laughs> it's a huge space step. Um, well, I think there, there are some steps here we can go through, like thinking about spirits, thinking about something that, that is over the, the physical world. But it's quite difficult because for us, to, for us now to understand God, and maybe it's not the, the purpose here, because I don't understand when Kardec asked in the third question of Spirit's book, he asked, is God the infinity? And the Spirit says, no, you can't say that because infinity, you don't know what it is. And God, you also do, don't know what it is. So you can't explain one unknown thing to another unknown thing. So God is an unknown, the big unknown. So um, maybe the steps here is to thinking about something that goes over the physical road, try to understand how it is, 
And for now, for now, this is really a thing that we don't need to care much about in, in terms of un completely understand, fully understand, because for now, God is not to be understood. God is to be felt, to be, I mean, to, to, to be seen near. Uh, as the Spirit says in the, the question, I think it's 244 in the Spirit's book. God is to be felt. So let's feel it. Let's feel it. It's good enough for now. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, we, we, we try to rationalize something that uh, is beyond our comprehension. We get, we get stuck. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, uh -huh. Thank you, Gustavo. Some uh, Jusara thanking you. Thank you for joining us. From Paula, thank you, Gustavo. Very exciting lesson. I learned so much. From Yasko, there was a good answer. We need to want and allow God's presence in our lives. Thanks, Gustavo. Very true. From Aline Matos, this is so amazing. I'm so happy to see you doing this amazing work in English. Congratulations, my friend. Okay, from Marisa de Mello. I'm glad with your presentation, my dear friend Gustavo. And from Shamanismo Mundial. This is so amazing. I'm so happy to hear you making this presentation in English. From Renata Danju, may Jesus continue to enlighten you. Thank you, Gustavo. Uh, you know, for for this being your first ever presentation in English, it was amazing. Really, really good work. You know, uh, I, I'm i sure everybody will, was able to understand everything you said, and more important, feel uh, what you brought to us, because in the end, that's what really matters. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Thank you so much. Any final words for us here? Um, well, this was challenging, actually, <laughs> uh, but I would like to thank your patient and your support. Um, and well, I think it's it's good to be here. It's good to to hold hands and walk together. And it's very good to to know that Spiritism is going through the world reaching many people, many hearts. That's the purpose. That's what we came here to do. And that's it. Thank you all. May God bless us all. And that's it. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Gustavo, once again. Um, just a reminder for all, next week we have we'll have... Uh, Kirsten de Mello doing the presentation, the United States Spiritist Federation talk uh, next Saturday, 11 a.m. Tomorrow at 10 a.m., please join us for the initiation into Spiritism. Um, we are going to have, uh, it's the subject is going to be disincarnation, death, which is lesson 17. And uh, it's a very interesting subject. Please make sure to join us. Um, and now, before we close, let's do our final prayer. We elevate our thoughts. We thank God and the spiritual benefactors for this opportunity of being together, of learning, of understanding. And we ask for their help and assistance for us to be able to put in practice on our daily lives everything we have learned this morning. We ask for a special blessing and protection for all those going through different struggles in this world, through wars, religious persecutions, discrimination, that we may all find in our hearts the will to overcome the differences, the challenges, to find peace, fraternity, and love amongst us. 
We thank our Master Jesus for another opportunity of being reunited in his name. It is with our hearts full of gratitude that we ask permission to close this meeting. So be it. <laughs>